Good evening, Africa, and thank you once again for joining us on Africa's number one entrepreneurship show. Now, our journey continues of going to the entire continent, different countries, and speaking to different entrepreneurs in different fields who get to come to our show and share with us their story. Whether they come from the creative space, whether they come from the IT industry, property, construction, whatever industry, we get to have these entrepreneurs coming to studio and um, share with us. And tonight we are joined by a young man who's doing extremely well for himself. His name is Sabelo Mtembu. He's a singer, he's a songwriter, he's an artist, he's a performer. And uh, this guy is a stellar gentleman because a couple of weeks ago, we interviewed his wife. And actually his wife is an entrepreneur as well. He's an entrepreneur in the creative sector, just like, you know, just like myself. I always have to go and explain myself to people. Like, are you really a DJ, but you host a business show? Yes, I am a DJ, but I'm an entrepreneur, and I've obviously built uh, businesses. I'm actually about to start my fifth startup company. But uh, it's not about me tonight. It's about Sabelom Tembu. Now, you're also more than welcome to join our conversation. The hashtag is KickingDoors410. Follow our Twitter handle. It's at CNBC Africa. Or you can also follow uh, my Twitter handle. It's at DJ Swoo. Mr. Sabelo, welcome to Kicking Doors. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Lovely. Jeez, you, you look great, my brother. Ah, thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah, and who, who dresses you? So, I self-dress. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but um, this was designed by a Nigerian friend of mine. Okay. Um, in uh, Orange Grove. Okay, does, yeah. does he have a brand or he's just um, generous? Well, no, he doesn't really have a brand, but he's got a, a, a space where he does his stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you want orders, you can just go straight to him. Yeah. So he doesn't really have stuff on the shelf or anything like that. But he's got a, a workshop where he does his uh, um, stuff, yeah. So there's a reason why I ask you if does he have a brand, because mm. th that's how entrepreneurs think. Once they see an mm. opportunity, they either create a brand around it, yeah. they make money out of it quickly to move on to the next thing, or they build they build a brand. Like I've built a couple of brands, you yeah. know, and yeah. you are in the creative space. Mm -hmm. How does one use their talents or turn their talents into a business? Look, I mean, first of all, your talent has to be in touch with who you really are. Um, and the best way to do that is to be genuine with, with whatever service that you offer. And then I, I feel like w when you do that, when you're able to do that, people will, re will receive it easier um, than when you had to when you have to try very hard, you know, to try and be something that you're not, yeah. and that in turn becomes your, your your brand, and it becomes what you stand for, you know, in general, whether whether it comes to societal issues and and, and all of that. So I believe it's about you being who you are, um, and that you can use to sell um, whatever product that you have, because it will go in line with that. Now you are selling your talent, which is your yeah. product. Same. I mean, I can relate to you. As mm. much as I can't sing, I've made a lot of money out of singing, yeah. out of mu the music industry. Yeah. Because of, you know, I come from the creative sector. I became yeah. creative and I created different brands around the entertainment space. Mm. Just like yourself, your talents are songwriting, mm. you're a singer, you're a vocalist, you're a performer, you're a composer, mm -hmm. and you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Now, how difficult was it for you to be able to start making money off your talents? Um, I must say it was difficult uh, because first of all you're not sure that your product will or will not sell. Um, sometimes you, because you just want to get into the industry, um, you start very small and you, you haven't built yourself up enough to have the confidence to say this is what I offer, you take it as it is. Um, you know, uh, this is this is what I'm going to give you, yeah. and you you just build up that confidence. So it was a little difficult, but now that I, I I came into the space of loving what I do and being confident with what I do, it became a lot more easier to tell people. You know, this is what I do, and um, they just you know connected with it. And what type of music do you make? So I do what I would call Afro soul jazz classic. Afro soul, soul jazz, jazz classic. classic. Yes, okay. it's got those elements actually. Yeah. Um, African music with a bit of soul in it um, and then it includes a bit of jazz and then there's a deep element of classical music which is my heritage uh, musically. Um, I started singing classical music and writing classical music yeah. so I've always wanted to have it somewhere in, in, in my genre so yeah that's why I call it African Afro soul jazz classical. Now somebody else might say but there isn't a huge market for that type of music. And somebody else can turn around and say, there's a huge market for it, and where do you stand? Look, 
Um, sometimes you can have a huge market, but it, it's, it's all about the activity of that market or the, the if I could find a, the right word, but how active that market is. Yeah. Um, you can make a killing from just a niche market. And you can know? even activate that market. Exactly. Because right now exactly. technology has allowed us to be more creative as, uh, as people in the creative arts. Exactly. So, I mean, for instance, I mean, I, I started my first business, my first yeah. startup company was a record company, an yeah. independent label, which went on to do very well yeah. Yeah. In, the, in, in the country mm. and boast you know, some of the most successful artists. Mm. But what I've seen is the game, that, well, we started in 2001, mm. and it's now 2017, and 16 mm. years later, mm. I'm no longer necessarily in the music business. I've moved on to other things. Yeah. But from a distance, having become a fan now, not mm. being inside the, the music industry, mm. I can see that it has changed, but it, it has. has changed for the better. Yeah. So you can make money out of events, shows, yeah, you can make money out of digital sales, yeah. you can make money out of endorsement, you can make absolutely. money out of creating brands or products or selling them. Absolutely. How are you making money? So I think for me, currently, my income stream would be, you know, obviously selling the music, firstly, um, and also doing a lot of corporate shows. I've tried to brand myself into a, a, a corporate kind of suitable um, musician, you know, that can have like a crossover kind of sound, yes, yeah. crossover kind of appeal. So I think I've been quite successful in that area, you know. Um, like last year, for example, I've, I've, I've been doing a lot of corporate uh, shows and truth be told, that's where the money is, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so that's how I've branded myself. Um, and I've also kept myself as this artist that wants to be accessed by the general public. So um, I, I also, do very well in, in trying to get into that space, uh, you know, and just selling the product myself, you know, which is also one of the biggest challenges in the music industry, you know, um, just getting your product out there, but just being open-minded and finding ways to, you know, make income. One has to always, you know, it be in that space. Now, the Nigerian brothers and sisters, artists in Nigeria, mm. are leading in terms of taking the African sound to the globe, to the world. Mm. A lot of our um, Nigerian artists are the ones mm. that are spearheading mm. the, the new revolution. Mm. I mean, Drake's number one hit record on the Billboard charts. The first time he, he has earned his number one as a lead artist mm. was uh, on a track that he co-produced with Wizkid and Maporisa yeah, from yeah. South Africa. Yeah. But I mean, there's, you've got your, your Wizkids, you've got your P-Squares, you've got mm. your Davidos, you've got your, mm. your Debanges, yeah. the guys that are taking the African sound to the rest of the world. Mm. Now, what are you guys doing? Let me, say, what, let, let me say, what are we? What are we <laughs> as South African artists? Or how are we contributing? to their struggle, because it's all of our struggle, mm -hmm. and these guys are doing a good job for the rest of us. Yeah. Um, in my mind, I do believe, it, it, it might be a myopic view, but I do believe that Africa can be a world in itself. We've got the resources. Um, the fight to try and be successful in Africa can be, it, it can cause a lot of pressure on, on an artist. Um, I do believe that you know, w w when you look back at, uh, you know, the days before apartheid, where you had artists like Yvonne Chaka Chaka, who were massive in Africa, uh, Brenda Farsi, who were massive in Africa. I think for me, that is what I would like to bring back, you know, try and get my sound more into Africa. Rather than having rather to than, appeal yes, globally. Yes. Okay. So okay. start here at home, because I believe that there's so much sound uh, that we can find here. I mean, I've got so many ideas of artists that I'd love to collaborate with, uh, you know, from... West Africa, East Africa, you know, so uh, I'm just, you know, as a new artist, I'm getting into that space where I build my brand first, because sometimes, you know, when you go to a big artist, you, you, you have to have a, uh, a pedigree, yeah, yeah, you have to have some, some sort of pedigree that you can say, listen, this is what I can do. And um, so w with the new music that I'm working on, I'm, I'm thinking more on a African collaborative space you know, musically, and wh which are the artists that I can work with and all of that, yeah. His name is Sabelom Tembu, and before he lets us go, I can't just let this um, entrepreneur slash composer, um, vocalist, performer, musician, leave here without performing something for you guys. So maybe he can uh, sing something as he bids us farewell to the camera over there. <laughs> something for the ladies, for the sisters. All right, uh, this is a song uh, that I wrote. It's called Angipili Maungeko. 
In Kanyezi Pelum Lil, is so Figil, is in Komozi Pelile, Solo Kuahamba. Angi Pili Maungeko, Angi Pili Maungeko. Oh, 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 if we had a studio audience, they'd be making a lot of noise right now. <laughs> Ladies would be going, ah, Savannah! <laughs> How do people get in touch with you? Have a website, social media, yeah. how do we get in touch with you? Um, actually, if you Google my name, you'll find me. There's a website, sabelomtembu.com. You'll find me on Twitter, at sabelomtembu, Facebook, everywhere, Instagram at Sabelum Tembo as well, so yeah. And I think that's a lesson though, like once you create a brand, stick to it and make sure that it's consistent on all different platforms. Yeah. Sabelumtembo.com. Sabelo is S-A-B-E-L-O. Mtembo is M-T-H-E-M-B-U. Sabelumtembo.com. You can find him there. Same name on Facebook, same name on Instagram, same name on Twitter, and uh, we wish him 